snubs, slights, and straight-up slaps in the face. Nobody does family feuding quite like the royals. The decades-long love affair between Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles should sound like a fairy tale. Unfortunately for the couple, the world tends to see this relationship as one born of tragedy in the wake of Princess Diana's death, and Queen Elizabeth seems to agree. Camilla's long-standing affair with Charles has attracted the Queen's ire for many years now. Charles and Camilla have been the subject of palace drama since the early 1970s when they briefly dated. However, they split and Camilla became engaged to Andrew Parker Bowles shortly after. Despite being married to someone else, Camilla continued to be a figure in Charles's life. She was even present at his wedding to Diana. According to People, Charles and Camilla restarted their relationship in 1986, which put pressure on Charles's marriage. In an infamous BBC interview, Diana said, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. The Queen was reportedly furious about Camilla's role in ending Charles's marriage, with the Daily Mail reporting a tipsy Queen Elizabeth even went so far as to call Camilla a, quote, wicked woman. The Queen did, however, give Charles permission to marry Camilla and hosted their reception, but refused to attend their marriage ceremony in 2005. While that certainly sounds like a snub, The Telegraph reported, the Queen is putting her duties as the head of the Church of England before family. Perhaps the most famous royal snub occurred in 1996 when Diana and Charles divorced, per the mirror. Despite Diana's insistence, she was stripped of her title of Her Royal Highness and instead became known as Diana, Princess of Wales. According to the mirror, more humiliating, though, was that she herself would now have to curtsy to her husband, her two sons, and a whole host of minor royals. But perhaps more pertinent was that losing her royal title also meant that Diana lost any connection to the royal family, including any future claim to the British throne. Diana agreed to give up the title in exchange for a large sum of money and the continued use of her royal apartments, although she was reportedly distraught over Charles's insistence on taking the name away. Unfortunately, Diana died in a tragic car accident in 1997, and soon after her death, there were calls to restore Diana's HRH status. However, as the BBC reported, Buckingham Palace consulted Diana's family and says the Spencers' firm view was that the princess herself would not have wanted any change to the style and title she had at the time of her death. Twice divorced American socialite Wallace Simpson's marriage to the Duke of Windsor, formerly King Edward VIII, had long ruled as the biggest royal marriage scandal in recent history. Edward famously abdicated the throne in order to wed Simpson, who divorced her second husband to be with the Duke. Edward was reportedly madly in love with Simpson. Time reported when asked if he would honor his vows at the altar, Edward cried, I will, in a shrill voice that was almost a scream. I think he was ahead of his time. I think he had lots of pep, and I think he was very much ahead of his time. The royal family, however, was not charmed by Edward's devotion to his American bride. Unsurprisingly, the firm absolutely did not approve of the marriage. The entire royal family skipped the wedding, and the couple was banished to France and only permitted to return to England if King George VI allowed it. The Guardian even reported that the Crown used financial blackmail to keep the scorned lovers at bay. On social media, a little pettiness goes a long way. Although brothers Prince William and Prince Harry have reportedly been on the outs since around 2017, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge still made an effort to wish Harry a happy 36th birthday in 2020 via Instagram and Twitter. The post read, Wishing a very happy birthday to Prince Harry today. Along with the sweet message, the Cambridges shared a photo of Harry running a charity race with his brother and sister-in-law. The rest of the family joined in, and similarly sweet posts were seen on the Twitter accounts of the royal family and Prince Charles. However, Vanity Fair reported, A mini controversy erupted when a commenter claimed it was a snub that they chose a photo that didn't include Meghan. That comment had more than 4,000 likes. Celebrity publications, including Elle and OK, bolstered the claim, asking why the Post would neglect to include the most important person in Harry's life. Royal superfan blog Gertz Royals defended the crown and wrote, 
Looking back at the other royal birthday tweets this year, most did not include the spouse in the photo. While additional drama is always developing between the brothers, the case that Will's post was not an intentional slight can also be made, especially as Will and Kate wished Meghan a happy birthday in a post that didn't mention Harry just a month before. Sarah Ferguson and Prince Andrew married in 1986 in a lavish Westminster Abbey ceremony. The pair divorced in 1996 following some scandalous 1992 photographs of the Duchess of York laying topless while her financial advisor sucked her toes. And yet Andrew and Fergie continued living together at the Royal Lodge in Windsor after their divorce, and have remained close friends ever since. Her friendship, however, apparently does not extend to the rest of the royal family. The nastiest bit of royal wrath to fly her way happened in 2011, when Prince William and Kate Middleton tied the knot. Although Fergie's daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, who are the Queen's grandchildren, were invited, the Duchess of York was not. To escape the festive buzz and drown her woes, she flew to Thailand to escape. Ferguson later revealed in an Oprah interview that being nixed from the guest list was very hard to deal with. She said that although Andrew helped her feel like she was part of the big day by keeping in touch with her during the celebration, it was still very painful to be left out. She revealed, It was so hard because the last bride up that aisle was me. Most outsiders, including Princess Diana, have a tough time fitting in with the royal family, and impressing the royals is a lot tougher than just knowing which fork goes with the salad. Diana apparently had a particularly hard time managing Princess Margaret, Prince Charles's aunt, and Queen Elizabeth's only sibling. It seems that any welcoming sentiment Margaret may have had did not withstand royal scandal. According to Craig Brown, author of Mom Darling, 99 Glimpses of Princess Margaret, Margaret was reportedly furious at Diana for giving intimate details of the affair between Charles and Camilla during her 1995 interview with the BBC. Brown told Fox News, Margaret was very unforgiving. She wouldn't even have magazines with Diana's face on the cover nearby. She would turn them over. The interview so incensed Margaret that she reportedly disliked Diana until the very end. It was also alleged that Margaret refused to give a real bow to Diana's casket. Instead, per Brown, Margaret gave the most cursory of nods, almost as though she were warding off a fly. As for the notion that a statue of Diana would be erected at Kensington Palace, Margaret allegedly said, I'm not having that woman outside my bedroom window. Basically, Princess Margaret managed to turn snubbing into a spectator sport. On February 19, 2021, Buckingham Palace released a statement announcing, The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have confirmed to Her Majesty the Queen that they will not be returning as working members of the royal family. The statement also revealed that Meghan and Harry would lose all of their royal patronages or military appointments having officially stepped down as senior members of the royal family. Although this was all purportedly coordinated and arranged between the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and the Crown, Meghan and Harry's response to the firm's statement carried an air of shade. A spokesperson for the Sussexes said in a statement, The Duke and Duchess of Sussex remain committed to their duty and service to the UK and around the world, and have offered their continued support to the organisations they have represented regardless of official role. We can all live a life of service. Service is universal. In Meghan and Harry's explosive March 2021 interview with Oprah, they both claimed they maintain a warm personal relationship with the Queen. However, Meghan also explained, I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. Were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. Princess Anne apparently made it no secret that she did not feel that her sister-in-law, Princess Diana, was fit to be part of the royal family. According to biographer James Whitaker, Anne was irritated by Diana, the constant carry-on in the press about her clothes and her charm. Anne's feud with Diana came to a head in 1984 after the birth of Prince Harry. Apparently, Diana neglected to invite Anne to be Prince Harry's godmother. When asked about Anne as a potential godmother for her future children, Diana made her feelings very clear, according to Whitaker, who claimed Diana allegedly retorted, I just don't like her. She may be wonderful doing all that charity work for Save the Children and others, but I can do it as well. 
in retaliation, Anne reportedly refused to attend Harry's christening, claiming that she was attending a shooting party instead. However, according to Whitaker, the excuse wasn't believed by anyone. Sure, most royal snubs are petty and pointless, but now and again they are definitely well-deserved. Following the fallout from his friendship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, Prince Andrew was apparently ignored by the Queen's official social media accounts on his 61st birthday. While most royals receive a social media birthday tribute via the Crown's official Instagram and Twitter accounts, Prince Andrew received only a brief mention on the royal family's Twitter feed. Typically, the Queen's beloved relatives are usually celebrated with a sweet message. Prince Andrew's birthday tweet, however, was straight out of a museum brochure, featuring a couple of historical photos and a complete lack of celebration, or the words, happy birthday. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry signed off their tenure as senior members of the royal family with a final official public appearance at the 2020 Commonwealth Day service. Reportedly, Meghan and Harry were not allowed to join the procession of royals that included other members of the royal family. Instead, they were to find their seats ahead of time and wait for the rest of the firm, a move which appeared to make both the Duke and Duchess of Sussex appear tense. It was speculated that in an attempt to smooth over the awkward tension, William and Kate skipped the procession and joined Meghan and Harry in their seats, but not before extending an awkward and very short greeting to the couple before the ceremony began. Buckingham Palace, however, offered no official explanation for why William and Kate headed directly to their seats. Unfortunately, 2,000 programmes had already been printed showing that Will and Kate were originally supposed to be part of the main procession, while not mentioning Harry and Meghan at all, making the snub glaringly obvious to anyone in attendance at the event. It's safe to say that William and Kate's interaction with Meghan and Harry at the 2020 Commonwealth Day service will go down as one of the most awkward moments in royal history and a definite snub. In his first Christmas speech as monarch, King Charles honored his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, addressed Britain's cost of living crisis, and celebrated the work of the Prince and Princess of Wales. The King even highlighted the importance of community spirit. We see it in our health and social care professionals, our teachers, and indeed all those working in public service. However, what the king didn't do was mention Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, or their two children, which led royal fans to wonder if Charles was sending a not-so-subtle message. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's absence from the king's Christmas address seemed doubly suspicious considering its close timing to the release date of Prince Harry's memoir. Multiple reports had already suggested that Charles was angered by revelations made in Harry's book, so it's not a stretch to wonder if the king decided to eliminate the Sussexes from his Christmas wishes. Whether he meant to or not, Charles's words caused a bit of a furor and only furthered rumors of a royal feud. The royal family traditionally celebrates Christmas at Sandringham, their country estate in Norfolk, England. However, following Queen Elizabeth's death in 2022, many wondered if the royals would carry on the tradition. In December of that year, it was revealed that, sure enough, King Charles planned to spend the holiday season at the estate with the rest of the family. However, it also seemed that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle would be missing from the festivities. While the new monarch had decided to continue his late mother's tradition, Meghan and Harry reportedly spent the holiday at home in California. Having moved to the United States, it's perhaps understandable that the Duke and Duchess wouldn't be in attendance at Sandra up for Christmas every year. After all, a transatlantic flight with two young children in tow is likely exhausting. Still, many royal fans appeared to see the couple's absence as a snub, with some wondering if Harry and Meghan had willingly turned down an invitation from the king to reunite with the rest of the clan. Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, contains an array of shocking stories about members of the royal family, revealing everything from alleged personal conversations with Prince William to supposed text messages sent by Kate Middleton. But one thing the prince seemingly didn't do in the book was thank several of his closest family members in the acknowledgement section, leading the general public to wonder if this might be an intentional snub. In Spare, Prince Harry writes, Above all, my deepest and adoringest thanks to Archie and Lily for letting Papa go off to read and think and reflect, and to my mother-in-law and to my incredible wife for too many millions of gifts and sacrifices, great and small, to ever enumerate. He also found time to thank the likes of Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, and Chris Martin, as well as Princess Diana's siblings, while failing to even mention his late grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, his father, King Charles, or his brother, Prince William. Boom. While these admissions may seem strange, they perhaps highlight Harry's reportedly strenuous relationship with the rest of his family. It probably didn't help that many of them don't come off too well in the book itself, either. 
the late Queen's husband, Prince Philip, passed away on April 9, 2021. His funeral took place at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle on April 17. The royal family gathered for the somber occasion, with Prince Harry flying back from California to pay tribute to his grandfather. However, according to the Daily Mail, Harry wasn't exactly welcomed back into the fold during the service. The tabloid noted that Harry was seen speaking with his brother Prince William and Kate Middleton, but Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and Sophie, the then Countess of Wessex, apparently stayed away from Harry altogether. Prince Harry himself has since opened up about Philip's funeral, and it certainly doesn't sound as if it was easy for the Duke of Sussex to reunite with members of his family. In May 2021, Harry told the Associated Press, I was worried about it. I was afraid." Harry even turned to lessons he'd learned during therapy to deal with the anxiety he felt about the situation, saying, "...it definitely made it a lot easier, but the heart still pounds." After a pretty public snub at Philip's funeral, it's perhaps unsurprising that Prince Harry didn't return for a memorial service honoring his late grandfather, which took place in March 2022. King Charles likely thought that his coronation weekend would be a joyous affair. However, Charles faced multiple knockbacks during the planning stages of the event, with many big stars allegedly refusing to perform at the coronation concert. Huge British stars like Elton John, Adele, Harry Styles, and Robbie Williams all reportedly turned down the chance to take part in the event. In an interview with Rolling Stone, music publicist Simon Jones theorized why so many celebs might have refused to appear in front of the king. He said, "...the royal family has faced a number of PR disasters in recent times, and anyone performing at the show would have to consider whether there would be a backlash from appearing amongst their fans." After being reportedly snubbed by a number of artists, the coronation planners managed to land boy band Take That, singer Lionel Richie, and composer Andrew Lloyd Webber for the event. Following the release of Prince Harry's memoir, royal family relations seem to be worse than ever. I don't think that we can ever have peace with my family unless the truth is out there. Case in point, King Charles allegedly deciding to avoid Prince Harry, even when they were both in the same country. The Duke of Sussex flew over to England in March 2023 to attend a high court case against Associate Newspapers, the company that owns the Daily Mail, amongst other publications. According to sources cited by The Telegraph, King Charles's packed schedule meant that he was simply too busy to see his youngest son during the brief visit. Despite the fact that they were both in England, Charles apparently couldn't find a 10-minute slot for his younger son. The Telegraph also reported that Harry wouldn't be seeing his brother during the trip either, as he was away on vacation with his wife and three children. Meanwhile, King Charles was apparently staying at his Highgrove residence during Harry's visit, and was preparing to leave the country for an official royal visit to Germany. Still, it's hard not to see Charles's apparent decision as something of a snub. 